this neighborhood was the first place that I used cocaine. Um, and it was also the last place that I used cocaine. Um, I found myself coming full circle here. I go by it all the time and it was unit four. Like it's so vivid to me. Um, you know, I remember the um, cocaine being put into lines on the table and I remember what that living room looked like. It's like a marker in time for me. I struggled immediately with my addiction. Um, it was within probably a couple of months. I was struggling to pay my bills. I was struggling to get to work. I was struggling in all aspects of my life because everything I had, I was into chasing my drug. The weight of my addiction um, brought me so much shame. I was self-sabotaging. Um, it cost me everything. It cost me my freedom. It cost me my children. It cost me my career. So that shame just fueled my addiction even more um, because I didn't see a way out for myself. My, I chose to flee. I ran to Toronto uh, and I thought that I could escape my problems by relocating. It was within a week that I was working in the adult entertainment industry and I was using the money that I had gotten from dancing to fuel my addiction. Um, I literally was prostituting. I was being human trafficked. I was around gangs and I was doing crime and it was all to fuel my addiction. Uh, nothing was off limits, nothing was sacred. I ended up uh, pleading guilty to numerous charges and serving a sentence. It hit me deep um, and I cried lots behind bars. It was tough, it was tough. The social workers and the counselors that I interacted with at the jails, you know, they made me realize that my life didn't have to end behind bars, that there was another way. Recovery for me was never a linear process. It's extremely easy for me to make the wrong decision and go and pick up. Um, I can get drugs anywhere, anytime, any place in this city. Some of the struggles that I faced and the stigma that I faced like impacted me significantly because you don't want to try. When you know you're going to be told no, um, when you're going to be looked down on, uh, when people are going to judge you. I've had people call me names and you know, and only see me for my addiction um, and the crimes I've committed. Uh, and there's so much more to me. And just like there's so much more to each individual who is struggling with substance abuse. You wouldn't pick on somebody who had cancer. You know, addiction is a disease. Being honest, like with myself about where I've been, um, empowers me to continue to not go back there. When I try to deny my past, try to deny the severity of it, um, those secrets keep me sick. If I go and apply for a job and they don't know that I was an addict, I have to constantly worry that they're gonna find out. Uh, so for me, I have to live my life in a way where I just put all my cards on the table and people need to accept me for who and what I am. As of today, I work at the Elizabeth Fry Society of Northwestern Ontario as a systems navigator. So we support uh, vulnerable women and criminalized women in the community and gender diverse populations. Um, I love my work. I, go, I get up every day and I enjoy going to my job. Uh, it's one of the places that I've really been able to excel um, because I'm able to help people that I know we're giving people um, at my job an opportunity to see that there is compa compassion and understanding for individuals. It doesn't matter how extensive their addiction is, they can always come to us and get help, uh, help and support. My hopes are that um, today by sitting down and speaking about my addiction is that other people who are struggling with substance use will know that there is hope for themselves. Um, anybody can come back from addiction. Uh, sometimes the only thing lacking for people is the opportunity.